This is a story about an unusual company. A company which every day serves other businesses and all households in an area with more than 80,000 residents and 10,000 businesses. A company, the modern production methods and technology of which are subject to the most strict health and safety and environmental regulations. A company, the products and services of which are a benefit to society. This is the story of Reino Sud. Reino Sud is a waste management company. We are responsible for the administration, planning, handling and treatment of waste materials in a large area of East Jutland and we consider ourselves experts in the efficient handling of waste. We are responsible for the collection of domestic refuse from all households in our area. Refuse collection is handled by our subcontractors, whilst our own staff handles the collection of waste paper for recycling. At 60 different locations in our service area, we have established collection stations where citizens can deposit sorted paper and glass bottle waste. We operate eight recycling centres where private citizens and businesses can deliver sorted waste for recycling, material retrieval or incineration. Certain types of dangerous waste may be delivered here for subsequent environmentally responsible disposal or treatment by Reino Su. Reino Su offers advice to businesses about reducing waste production and how waste materials can best be sorted and handled in an environmentally safe manner, often with economic benefits for the company. Reduction of waste, reuse and recycling are the first priorities at Reino Su. Most of the waste that is not suitable for recycling or reuse is handled at our incineration facility in Scannabor. Besides ensuring an environmentally controlled incineration, the process also converts waste into energy in the form of electricity and district heating. Some waste material is buried, either at our landfill facility near Scannabor or in landfills or underground facilities in other countries that specialise in the handling of dangerous waste. So rubbish is not simply rubbish. There are enormous benefits for society when waste materials are sorted so that materials which may be reused or recycled are separated and that which must be disposed of is handled safely and responsibly. And that's our business here at Reino Su. Our society produces a lot of waste. Every time we buy anything, there are waste materials, packaging, bottles, printed matter, or simply leftovers that we didn't use. And all this gets thrown away. And we throw things out like never before. Not just scraps from the kitchen, but also consumer goods, such as furniture, clothes, electronic devices and household appliances that may be worn out or simply out of fashion. When we rebuild or decorate our homes, we produce a lot of waste, just as tending to our garden also results in large quantities of organic waste. But private households are not the only producers of waste. Business and industry make a major contribution. Almost every manufacturing process results in the production of waste or unwanted byproducts. Besides manufacturing industries, other businesses such as offices and restaurants also produce waste. There was a time when rubbish was simply something that had to be disposed of, out of sight, out of mind. Huge landfills, often disused gravel pits, were for decades filled with all types of waste. Forty years ago, most of Denmark's household refuse was disposed of in landfills. With the increase in living standards during recent decades, the amount of waste has increased in proportion to our consumption. Globalisation has also played its part in that more businesses and private households buy more imported goods, resulting in more packaging and more waste. We have learnt by our mistakes. We have seen that the space available for new landfills is limited and that the landfill approach is a bad solution, environmentally and economically. Here in Denmark, we have also recognised that rubbish may be valuable. For most categories of waste, it is a fact that someone, somewhere, can use that which we regard as worthless trash. 
Industries that produce large quantities of homogenous waste, for example plastics and metals, today have good opportunities to sell their waste products at a profit. Some industrial waste or byproducts are valuable, and recycling makes sense, because the waste material is usually easy to sort and separate. But domestic refuse from households and businesses usually comprises many different types of waste, which all too often end up in the same dustbin or container. It is here that the greatest challenge of waste management is to be found, because different waste materials require different strategies and processes. When these materials are mixed together, the task of managing the waste can seem almost insurmountable. However, efficient waste management is far from impossible. Denmark is at the forefront of waste management. We have learned that over 90% of our waste, from both industry and private households, can be reused, recycled, or disposed of in a way which is beneficial to our society and responsible towards our environment. This is the story of how Reino Su harvests the wealth of waste. Mankind has burnt rubbish since the dawn of time. Incineration is an effective way of destroying organic waste so that the risk of infection is reduced. By incineration, the weight and volume of waste is reduced dramatically. Just see how little ash and cinders remain after a bonfire. There was a time when many households, particularly in rural areas, burnt all their rubbish. Today, in Denmark, private incineration of household refuse is illegal, and for good reasons. Many types of waste contain chemical compounds, which when burned at a low temperature, for example in a wood-burning stove, produce toxic gases and particles, which are released with the smoke from the chimney. Such gases and particles represent a considerable hazard to public health and the environment. Many types of waste, especially household refuse, contain a lot of water. To incinerate such waste requires high temperatures because the materials must be dried before they can burn. There are also many waste materials which can be reused or recycled. Such waste has a value and should not be burnt. Where incineration is the best solution, it is vital that the waste is burnt safely and efficiently, at a high temperature and with a sufficient supply of oxygen to ensure complete combustion of all toxic components and that the combustion gases and particles are filtered and separated before the clean exhaust gas leaves the chimney. Reino Sul operates an incineration facility in Scannabor. This is a combined heat and power generation plant. The heat energy from the incineration process is used to produce both electricity and hot water for district heating. The facility comprises two furnaces. The first was built in 1984 and the second was added in 1992. The facility is continually upgraded to comply with the increasingly stringent requirements for the efficient and environmentally responsible incineration of waste. For the local community, this approach represents an annual saving of approximately 22 million litres of oil or 33,000 tonnes of coal, which would otherwise have been consumed to deliver an equivalent supply of electricity and district heating energy. The incineration plant supplies electricity to approximately 4,500 households and district heating to approximately 6,000 homes. And because the waste would be burned anyway, the cogeneration approach represents an annual reduction of CO2 emission by 66,000 tonnes. An incineration plant is essentially a big furnace, with many ancillary systems to control and monitor the combustion process and to limit the emission of toxic gases and particles in both the exhaust smoke and the residual ash. To ensure a clean and efficient combustion, it is necessary to keep the furnace burning continuously. Therefore, the facility operates 24 hours a day. Approximately half of the waste for incineration comes from domestic households. On their way in and out of the facility, the refuse trucks are weighed so that the weight of the refuse received 
may be logged. The refuse is only delivered during working hours. The furnaces run continuously. Therefore the waste is first tipped into the silo, where there is capacity for several days incineration, so that operation may continue during weekends and public holidays. The plant is shut down for maintenance for a week or two each summer, always at a time of low demand for district heating. Large quantities of auxiliary fuel, typically oil, are necessary when restarting the furnace after maintenance shutdown. It takes several hours before the required temperature for incineration is achieved. Domestic waste must be sorted at source by the householder so that only materials that are suitable for incineration are put into the refuse container for collection. Almost all domestic refuse goes directly to incineration. Therefore, unlike many industrial operators, we're unable to control the quality of our raw material. Instead, we must trust our suppliers, the public. A battery that is delivered along with household refuse is a problem. Batteries do not burn well, and we must use extra resources to remove the toxic residue from our system. It is for this reason that waste management companies like Reno Sioux make an effort to persuade private householders and businesses to sort their waste so that only suitable materials are incinerated. The operators in the control room have an overview of the entire facility. With the aid of two grab cranes, they are able to move the refuse around in the silo and onwards to the furnaces. The furnace must be fed continuously and the different types of waste in the silo are mixed so that easily combustible material such as wood is mixed with wet household refuse to achieve the optimal mixture for an efficient incineration. The refuse is lifted by the crane from the silo to a loading hopper at the top of the furnace. Once it passes into the furnace, it is impossible to see, as the furnace is enclosed because of the high temperature. The refuse falls onto a moving grate, and the grate elements oscillate alternately to spread the refuse evenly and move it downwards through the furnace. A primary blower underneath the grate forces air up through the furnace bringing the temperature up to between 1,000 and 1,200 degrees centigrade. The refuse dries rapidly and burns easily. Under combustion, the refuse gives off many toxic gases and particles. The furnace is designed to maintain a combustion gas temperature exceeding 850 degrees, with an oxygen content of 6% to ensure complete combustion of the gases before they leave the afterburner zone above the furnace. The combustion gases are pulled onwards through the system by suction fans. The hot gases then pass through a boiler, a system of vertical chambers surrounded by water pipes. Here the water is heated to steam with a temperature of approximately 430 degrees and under high pressure is fed to a turbine. The high pressure steam drives the turbine, which in turn drives a generator that produces 3 megawatts of electricity. The generator is connected to a transformer from which electricity from the incineration plant is distributed to the public electricity network. After passing through the turbine, the steam is piped through a heat exchanger in which the steam heats water from Scannabor's district heating network. The district heating water is heated from approximately 40 degrees to approximately 90 degrees before it is pumped out to households in the town. The steam is cooled in the heat exchanger and is condensed to water again, after which it is pumped back into the boiler. The water used in the incineration plant is rainwater recovered from surface drains around the facility, and almost all the water discharged from the facility is recovered and used again. The combustion gas leaving the boiler has now cooled to around 180 degrees. The gas still contains many toxic gases and fine particles, which must be removed before the flue gas stream is released into the atmosphere. The gas flows through an electrostatic precipitator, in which particles and smoke are removed from the flue gas stream by an induced electrostatic charge. The flue gas stream is then passed through a reactor, in which lime and activated carbon are added. The lime absorbs acids in the flue gas, particularly hydrogen chloride and sulfuric acid. The activated carbon absorbs toxins such as mercury and dioxin. From the reactor, 
the exhaust gas stream passes through a bag house filter, an arrangement of 960 filter bags that catch many of the remaining particles. The particulate byproduct is moved with compressed air to a sealed silo, from which it is collected regularly by tankers and trucked to Germany, where it is used as fill material in disused salt mines. From the baghouse filter, the flue gas stream is passed through a wet scrubber. Here, a fine spray of water removes the remaining particles in toxic gases. This process also cools the flue gas stream to around 60 degrees and consumes, through evaporation, approximately 100 cubic metres of water a day. Rainwater, gathered from the surface and drains around the facility, supplies the entire process, including the scrubber. The only wastewater which is fed into the public sewers is from the administration building. When the flue gas stream has passed through the various filtration systems, it is clean enough to be released into the atmosphere. The exhaust temperature at the top of the chimney is approximately 60 degrees. Contrary to popular opinion, the smoke from the top of the chimney is not smoke. It is mostly steam. The chimney at the incineration plant is a local landmark, by which all can see for themselves which way the wind is blowing. Every year, the incineration facility in Skanabor handles 60,000 tonnes of assorted waste, which results in approximately 10,000 tonnes of bottom ash from the furnaces and around 1,800 tonnes of particulate byproduct from the filters. Most of the bottom ash is recycled. Once the residual metals have been separated and sent to recycling, the residue is crushed and sold as construction aggregate, typically for road building. The incineration process is monitored and controlled from start to finish. The operators monitor the temperature and composition of the exhaust gases throughout the entire process to ensure that all emissions regulations are adhered to. Like all industrial operations, Reynosu is subject to the strictest environmental and health and safety controls. We are environmentally certified under the EMAS system and our activities and records are independently audited to ensure that our environmental goals are met and that planned environmental improvements are implemented. The incineration facility is maintained and upgraded regularly to ensure operation in accordance with high environmental standards. If all the waste that can be reused or recycled or that requires special handling and processing were separated at source, we would still need incineration. Incineration is an environmentally responsible method of waste disposal. Thanks to modern technology and know-how, the waste is incinerated under controlled conditions, thus avoiding the many environmental and safety issues associated with illegal domestic incineration. And incineration gives something back to the community, in the form of electricity and district heating, reducing our dependence on fossil fuels. At Reynosu, we know which way the wind is blowing. Waste management companies face a unique challenge and have a vital responsibility. We are the custodians of the community's waste, and we must guide it carefully and safely through many complex processes. Though we have no influence on the quantity, quality or composition of our raw material. The efficient collection and responsible processing of waste requires training, expertise and experience, combined with a commitment not only from all our employees, but also from every resident in the communities that we serve. Reynosu is a modern, full-service waste management company. Our expertise and abilities comprise much more than the tangible technology of waste management that most outsiders associate with our business. Our employees are specialists in their field, with an experience and an insight that is vital for the political, strategic and practical planning of waste management in our service region. Throughout the year, the refuse trucks visit homes and businesses in the community. The recycling centres 
receive a wealth of waste. And homes and offices in Scannerbore enjoy an environmentally friendly energy supply as a byproduct from our incineration facility. Behind the scenes, our staff continue to work on new ideas and plans that will ensure our continued ability to manage waste efficiently and responsibly according to the needs of the time. And to do this, we must continue to watch which way the wind blows. Thank you.